Thank you and good afternoon uh, all. And, and thank you very much for having me on this platform to take you through some of our thinking at Kani around digital transformation in the public sector. My name is Prashan Reddy. I'm a partner at, at Kani, focused on the digital strategy and transformation work that we do uh, do in, in Africa. Um, so if I, if I can kick things off, um, I guess it's it's very clear that uh, from a digital transformation point of view, when we start to look at it within emerging countries like South Africa or emerging economies like South Africa, a digital is starting to play a, a much bigger role and a very important role in creating a, a citizen-centric uh, response for the public sector. And really that's been driven by, we see four key Key trends. The first is, of course, rising expectations of citizens uh, with the growth we see in uh, technology savvy young uh, citizens wanting to engage with governments uh, and the public sector in a more technology driven way. We've seen obviously the growth in urbanization in the middle class and rising literacy rates across emerging economies and countries like South Africa. So I guess very important to have uh, these mechanisms to engage just in, in these grow, growing and developing populations. And we've started to, of course, see a demand and a need for transparency, effective and efficient services uh, delivered by, by government. So very clear that citizens are expecting more. Um, especially in, as, we, as these emerging economies grow and, and develop. Uh, of course, this has been spoken about a lot, you know, when, with regards to COVID, um, there's been, of course, uh, a lot of progression on the digital front. Uh, we've started to see even some government services migrating to online platforms. I think recently we even had some very high profile court cases in South Africa been, uh, been uh, aired in, in a virtual way and been managed through virtual uh, conferences. So we're starting to, of course, see the establishment of these public services through virtual and digital platforms, really starting to drive and create more opportunity for government to leverage these things going, going forward as we live in these uh, COVID times. It will then create the foundation for more digital government services. And of course, the other element that's been driving digitization in the public sector with governments is, of course, the improvement in cost efficiencies uh, and really starting to bring down the cost to serve uh, citizens in terms of using digital uh, technologies. We're also starting to look at how these types of technologies can start to develop revenue streams for, for, gov for governments and commercialize these revenue streams uh, as, as, as government provides these services to citizens. And last but not least, I think one of the key elements has been, of course, uh, creating a competitive advantage and creating an environment for investors and businesses to operate in where we attract, we have less bureaucracy, less red tape, more efficient services, and increases the ease of doing business and transparency and therefore efficient governance uh, within, within the public sector. So really a very clear need for uh, and real trends that are driving the transformation in, in the digital sector, in the, in the public sector. So really, the, um, the, the, the change in the public sector with regards to digitization has happened in three waves. Uh, in the first phase of this transformation, we saw many governments and public sector entities move to, to online systems, away from manual systems and, and paper processes and manual processes, um, and really started to implement a, a digital way of working. Um, with DRPs and CRMs and, and, and even starting to knock on the door of creating online access uh, to, to many citizens. And most of the leaders we saw were then in about 1995 in terms of the countries that have progressed through this journey. South Africa is somewhere in the middle between this first phase and, and second phase, as I'll now talk about. Um, in terms of the second wave of digital, digital, digital transformation and proliferation, we saw uh, the, the introduction of centralized data management and uh, intro introduction of mobile platforms and electronic access to, to citizens via mobile services. And really, this started to gain traction and momentum in about 2005, where many countries started to look at these platforms as opportunities to engage citizens and understand how they can start to centralize more data around citizens um, and, and provide services via these platforms. And of course, where we are today and, and where most of the leaders are have moved towards is, is moving towards making e-government services smarter, 
this introduces the you know cloud computing advanced analytics and then machine learning into the into the capabilities of government where we start to look at how we harness you know, citizen data and create experiences that are predictive for for, for citizens uh, where we are able to provide services you know preemptively looking at uh, renewal renewal processes for passports and, and other identification documents starting to look at more predictive uh, analytics around where infrastructure is needed and how best to serve consumers. So really starting to move into analyzing and utilizing the infrastructure and data that, that governments do, do uh, possess uh, in this, and then start to provide smarter services to citizens. But of course, within the public sector, we've seen some, some growth and development. It's not all that we are far behind. I think we all know very well, maybe not, not so fortunately, that our South African revenue services uh, in fact, implemented many technologies uh, over the years uh, in which they have really pushed the, the digital agenda. And, uh, and we know that, of course, e-filing and the many ways in which you can engage with South African Revenue Services has been part of that journey. And, of course, recently announcing last year that they were going to use artificial intelligence to start to analyze potential, you know, where we have tax offenders and in, in, ensure compliance and increase compliance. And, of course, earlier this year, government also announced plans to introduce online IDs for South Africans, uh, something that's been implemented in many other countries and creating a digital citizen, if you will, uh, as part of that, of that process. But we've got a long way to go. Uh, news headlines around cyber attacks and security issues around, around uh, South African major organizations as well as some of the public sector uh, entities, and certainly around how do we in introduce policy and manage adoption of cloud and, and data mechanisms so that we can actually improve? So we've got a journey to go, but certainly we've, we've started that journey. We have patches, of, I would say, of, of, of good work and, and excellence development and digital transformation across some of the public sector entities. And it's a question is, how do we harness this, this, this journey? Of course, when we look at uh, the UN e-government rankings around the public sector, which really starts to look at how, how, and they, how are we enabling this transformation towards e-government, we see a tremendous amount of progress has been made by South Africa, particularly. I mean, we ranked third on the continent, 78th globally, and particularly along, around the areas of online, along online services, which measure, measures the government's ability and willingness to provide services electronically. Uh, we've seen improvements in our infrastructure development, but I think here yeah, there's still more work to be done. The number of people that have access to broadband uh, and, and uh, fixed broadband as well as mobile infrastructure uh, at, at the speeds and uh, that are required needs to be improved, as well as some of the sort of literacy around utilizing some of these services and capabilities that we need to, to build out in our education system from a digital perspective needs to be improved on, and, and that's where the human capital index comes in. Nonetheless, we've seen definitely an improvement, um, particularly for South Africa, across all of these measures. Uh, and, but there is still room for improvement if we are to really accelerate this transformation uh, in the public sector. Of course, what's holding us back and what's holding many public sector entities and governments around uh, back around digital transformation, I think here we list about eight of them. I think the first being around um, the varied level of digital maturity. I think what you, what you will see, and this is not uncommon in, in emerging markets, is that you have hotspots of digital maturity. Like we do here in South Africa, there are certain areas of public service that are more mature digitally, and there are others that are, that are just quite far behind. And we've got a sporadic uh, view of maturity of, across the different capabilities, health, education, revenue services, uh, and we need to re really need to start to think about how we can leverage uh, the best of, of, of what we have in the state to, to solve some of this. Of course, as the state always has a mandate to, and the public sector always has a mandate to, to focus on job creation and preservation, there's a social angle to this, and of course that brings in the element of automation and how do you balance uh, job creation versus automation in the public sector when it comes to some of the processes that, that can that can be automated and replace jobs. So, you know, this mandate has to be carefully managed, reskilling, retooling, and refocusing people in the right ways to, to, to ensure that we don't suffer a job loss in certain areas of the economy because of this. 
Uh, in the public sector, regulatory burden is obviously quite high. There are many entities obviously with lots of policy and regulation and govern governance, uh, and therefore this can slow down, sometimes hinder and stop digital transformation, and we've got to make sure we understand the best of how to handle and navigate that regulatory burden. Um, public budget allocation is another area. Um, we often see uh, governments allocating budgets in various ways. In some, in some instances, some departments in some areas you know, really investing in digital while others don't have the budget at all to invest in digital. So it's about how do we prioritize this allocation and ensure effective cross-government uh, digital uh, budget allocation to, to really drive the changes required. A big one in the public sector, of course, well, in all sectors nowadays, with the rise of cyber, cyber attacks is definitely security and, and definitely with government where you've got a lot of sensitive citizen information, uh, as well as public sector information uh, and government information, you want to make sure that you are managing the security uh, quite carefully. And, and this obviously means that having the right kind of policies, uh, the right kinds of um, uh, cyber security strategies are going to be important to manage uh, and the protection of citizen data and create trust um, in the system uh, that citizens are, are comfortable to use these, these various services. Something that we always see in the public sector, of course, is the skill shortage, and, and, and the skill shortage is we are always competing with the private sector uh, when it comes to trying to attract some of the best digital talent, uh, and it does always make it an, an issue. And, and the private sector also faces this challenge quite clearly. Uh, these are a rise of new skills and capabilities, and in emerging markets, it's really a war for talent in trying to in trying to attract these types of digital skills into the right spaces. So I think it is, it is definitely something that we have to look at in terms of how we leverage the public and private sector capabilities in, in delivering digital transformation in the public sector. We'll talk a little bit about it in the slides that follow. We must not forget about public sector employees uh, and, and ensuring this buy-in in transformation in digital. So often you find this is slowed down or limited buy-in occurs just on, on, on government employees supporting or public sector employees supporting the, the transformation of services towards digital if there's not enough groundwork done and involvement done with regards to those who work in the public sector. So in, in, that, in that case, it's very important to ensure that we, we, we co-create and bring along those that are involved in the de delivery of such government services so that we ensure that there's buying. And something that always gets ch challenged in the public sector or something that always, always is a challenge is the implementation speed in which we execute uh, and how do we ensure that we um, are able to manage these large programs effectively and deliver them in a timely way so that we can actually have an impact and create trust with, uh, with citizens around this digital transformation. Well, it can be done, and here are some, some good examples of what's been happening around the world. Um, and we wanted to highlight a couple uh, here. Estonia being one of the places, and, and if you do some research and have a look at Estonia, you will see that they're really pushed to transform the public sector and government around digital, uh, really focused on two main pillars, one to create a digital state, and the other to create digital citizens, uh, which has enabled them to you know, create the infrastructure a lot to provide services to citizens in a, in a digital way, also enabling businesses to operate in Estonia in a very digital way. Um, and of course, this has transformed how they deliver government services, uh, and really they've placed the citizens at the core of that, uh, of how they've designed it, um, and hence a requirement for all citizens to have a digital ID, which help them uh, sort of create these services. They claim that, that that's obviously created a 2% uh, savings in their sort of cost related to GDP, as well as years of efficiencies that have been gained in terms of public and private sector uh, you know, services um, uh, in terms of working efficiency in services. The United Kingdom also did some very interesting things, and I think one of the, the most interesting learnings is the centralization of digital transformation. So they created a, an office called GDS, which focuses on supporting cross-government um, uh, services in, in digital, and looked at how do they standardize, how do they create a one-stop uh, place for services for all government entities to depend on, and ensure that they create you know, the right policies, have the right capabilities, look at vetting the right kinds of suppliers so that they can support the rest of government around their digital transformation. So really creating a sense of excellence, if you will, around digital transformation 
and then driving that, using that center to drive digital services in a very standardized way across all of the UK's um, uh, services to citizens. And, and there's been massive savings, about 63 billion pounds per year saved. Uh, these DDS claims to have provided that kind of level of savings and, and about 1.2 billion pounds in terms of uh, you know, savings and spend controls. South Korea is also another great example where digital transformation has really taken off and, and really they've moved in the last 17 years to the world's number one in terms of uh, UN uh, participation ranking, where you look at the participation of government and citizen, citizens in all of the digital services. And, uh, and really this has been driven through education, through also centralized um, capabilities for digital transformation across government and, uh, and, and really involving uh, stakeholders, businesses, and citizens in the development of digital solutions and services. So really trying to understand what citizens want uh, and how to, how to ensure that they, they gain traction in delivering these services. So really some really nice case studies that, uh, that are out there in terms of the public sector and, and learnings we can get from other, other countries who are, are already on their way in terms of digital transformation in the public sector. What does that mean in terms of focus? Um, I think what we've learned um, through the various studies and, and trying to understand what's happening in the public sector from a digital transformation point of view is that firstly, we need to ensure we have a very ambitious strategy. I think our, you know, in, in South Africa, I think we're very clear that we do want to push the agenda of digital, um, but I think it's important to ensure that it's broad, it's bold, and it's clear that we want to really transform the experience of citizens of business in, in South Africa when engaging in the public sector. Uh, and really have a very ambitious target and strategy around doing that. Second, we need to make sure, like, like the UK, we create an enabling environment um, and we understand how to centralize some of the support, how to ensure governance doesn't become the red tape for transformation, and how do we create centralized structures to support, you know, uh, delivering digital transformation, something that it can't even call it a digital control tower, which really starts to focus on how do you transform in the most effective way, eliminating all of these roadblocks uh, around transformation. So government really should think about how do you create this centralized uh, space to drive transformation using the pockets of excellence you do have. Focus and keep citizen experience at the core in the public sector. This is a critical part. Just as we do that in the private sector around customer experience, we must ensure that we keep citizens' experience at the core of this transformation. And we ensure that we create integration across services so citizens feel consistency, they feel that um, services are, are, are being integrated and, and are offered to them in a way that is, that is seamless. Prasheen, I'm going to be that dreaded time uh, keeper in the background, uh, just uh, giving you about a minute or two, a couple of minutes. Okay, no worries. I'm going to wrap up now. So, um, I think, I think very clearly, um, you know, ensuring you involve and cooperate with, with the various stakeholders across government. I think here, something to be interested, something to take note of is we've got state-owned enterprises, municipalities, you know, various governments, departments. How do we ensure that we, we bring everybody on board in, in terms of creating a holistic digital transformation for the public sector? Uh, and, and part of that is, as I spoke about, centralization and capability sharing. So the role of the private sector uh, in, in Public sector transformation is really important. They have the skills, the capabilities. How do we create these triple P sort of partnerships with the private sector to ensure we can deliver the right uh, digital transformation utilizing capabilities we have? So in closing, I just wanna quickly highlight these four key points. It's really around how do we ensure optimal budget allocation in the right areas with the right focus consistently across the public sector, ensuring that we, we drive it from a citizen point of view and really define our services around citizens to, to improve public sector digital transformation. Leverage capabilities we've got uh, within government as well as uh, you know in those pockets of excellence uh, like SARS and other places or uh, looking at the private sector and look at centralizing the digital transformation. So how do we create a central capability within the public sector that can help really share best practices and drive, drive the digital transformation. So I'll stop there. Um, since I've been warned, and uh, hopefully that gives you a good, a good sense of some of the thinking. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Prasheen. That is Prasheen Reddy, who's a partner at Kearney, talking to us about uh, digital transformation across the public sector. 